Watch Mr. Wizard. That's what all the kids in the neighborhood call him because he shows them the magic and mystery of science in everyday living. Oh, hi, Rita. Come on in. You stand right there. Sure. Because I have a um, new pair of glasses. Pair of glasses? Yes, I don't have I a, didn't know you wore them. Well, I don't have them mounted yet. But I thought I'd show you. They're quite nice. You see, I have a severe eye problem. <laughs> it looks like you do. Uh, can I, have What's I got wrong? them adjusted so that you can see my eye? Well, one's so big. Yeah. It's enormous. The one I've got open now is little. Yes. Good. And the one I've got up now is big. Well, how can you go around with those kind of eyes? Well, I told you, they were special kinds of lenses. Because I wanted to use these, because today we're going to investigate the fact that when you know how to do it, you can bend light and uh, not only do some useful things like lenses, but you can also play a lot of tricks. Oh, I like tricks. All right. Well, here's one of the first ones. You see up there, there's a, a dish with a sugar ball in it? Yes. No, sugar bowl. We have one of those. Okay. And here's um, liquid. See it? Mm -hmm. Okay, now watch what water. happens. Notice, by the way, that the sugar bowl is, has cut, has all kinds of, you know, designs yeah, so cut on the sides. And... Right. See what's happening to the designs on the side? They're gone. Yes, they're gone. Where do they go? Well, now the sugar oil is beginning to float. I'll pour some of the some of the liquid in there, and you watch. Where's the sugar bowl? I can't see it. It's gone. It's in there. It has to be in there. I see. In fact, here I can show. I can prove to you that it's in there. Look. Looks like it's floating. Yeah. And yet, when I take it away, it looks like the sugar bowl has disappeared. Well, these are the, some of the kind of tricks that you can play when you know how to bend light. So maybe we better start at the very beginning with some very simple, uh, simple sort of experiments That's about very the, good. It isn't it? Isn't well, it? Well, just to prove Can't to you that it it's there. Well, it's there. It's there, all right. Well, let's start from the beginning now to show simple experiments about the fact that light can bend. Come on around over here. Over here. And stand right about there. Do you see those two little wire screens that I yes. have made that stand up like that? Now, how Which come we... How come you can see them? Well, the light comes down, hits the screen, goes to my eye, goes to my brain, okay. and then I say, there's the screen. All right, and I see that you've learned your lesson well about when we investigated <laughs> yes. light. The light from the screen is bouncing directly right to your eye. Okay. Now watch what happens when I put these two empty glasses in front of them. Well... I still see it because it goes right through the glass. Yes, but notice see through it. Notice right here on the edge. I'll move it over just a little bit so that you can see it. It's uh, broken off. Yes, notice that the line is no longer straight right here. It is kind of in the middle, but over here on the edge, it's, it's kind of bent a little bit. Okay, why? Where's the light going now? Is it going straight to your eye? Well, it's going through some glass first. Yes, it's going and through some glass. Eye. All right, now, I will fill or, this glass partially full of water. And watch what happens. They got bigger. What's they? The little boxes, the little, the little holes. The little, now let me move it around so I can straighten out, so I can get one maybe right straight for you. There. Oh, See, much here's a little, here the square sort of in the center. Now the squares are much bigger and they're sort of flat, aren't they? They go along this way. Well, why? Why? Yeah. That? yeah. That you well, Tom, you, you the took water, the question so it has right. To do something. You took the question right out of my mouth. I was going to ask you why. Well, I'll ask you why. All right. Well, it must have something to do with the fact that we have interfered with the path of light from the, from the screen to your eye. What now it has to go through water. has to go and through. And glass. Yes. Has, <laughs> but obviously the water had much more effect than the glass. All right, it now, changed it. watch this. Here is another liquid which I'll pour in this glass. Watch. It's a sloppy liquid. I can't <laughs> pour it very well, as you see. It's even more. Now let me adjust that one, so... <clears throat> I can't even see one box. Yes, you see that? It's how... It's how just lines across. No, no, none of the vertical ones at all, only the horizontal. In other words, this liquid disturbs the line of light from the thing to your eye much more than this one. Sure it does. Yes. Well, does what that, is that? Well, does that give you a... Well, let's see, that doesn't help you too much, probably, huh? I thought maybe this, this would help 
you understand what we're investigating today, how light is bent. Well... It doesn't? No. <laughs> well, you can, do this, you can do this to trick at home quite easily, uh, but maybe I better explain that. Maybe I better bend some light for you, really, so that you understand it. Bend some light? Yes. Get a light and okay. just bend it. Well, sort of. Up here is the brandy snifter. See that brandy snifter? Yes. I've got it all covered around here with black background so that we That's keep the number. Stuff in it. Yes, water? it has. It, well, it's water, and I've added a little uh, chemical called fluorescine in it. And uh, here, here's my special smoker. Hatches. See? Oh. We now have a good supply of smoke. Very convenient. Okay, I have this rigged up so when I turn on the light here, a little beam of light is going straight down through here into this glass. So Can you the see light's it? Going there. Yes. Yeah, the light's going in there now. You see yes. the light going through there? Yes. Now watch what happens when I add some smoke up above so we can see the path of light as it goes through the air first. There it is. You see the light through the air? Well, and now you see what air. happens when it hits the water? Mr. Wizard, in the what? air, it's straight. Yeah. And then it goes in the water and it's bent. In fact, I'll see if I can bend this, uh, uh, turn this at a little better angle so, so it will even be more bent. First it goes straight and then it says, I'll now, turn my direction. Why? In other words, when the light goes from the air into the water, it bends. And that's the kind of bending I'm talking about. That kind of bending right there. And that's what we're going to try to investigate today. And not only investigate something about how it bends, but how you can control it and how you can do magic tricks with it. Magic tricks? Yes. Oh. Like that one I showed you with the disappearing sugar bowl, all bent on this idea. I'd like to learn that one. Okay, now why forward. should the light bend, however, when it goes from air, which is thin, to water, which is thicker? That's the next question. Why should it bend? Why hmm? should it? Shouldn't it yes. go straight through? It should. Well, you'd think so. Like maybe we should. Maybe we should see if we can. I've, if I can explain that to you, why it is that light bends when it goes from air into water, and and. Well, by the way, what kind of a medium is light? Well, light is uh, an energy. It travels energy. on air. Energy. Oh, and it travels. Well, not no. It, it is energy in the well, form of waves. waves, isn't it? That's right. Okay, let me turn the light on again here, and see, and see if I can explain now what happens in terms of waves. This is a, that? well, this is a beam of light. A beam of light? Yes. And, uh, Very nice beam of light. And we said that wi light was waves, and if you know if you drop, remember when we did some investigations with, uh, with light, and I tried to prove to you that light and sound and everything were all the same. Oh, yes, I remember. And we put we a drop of water, <laughs> put a drop of water in, and the all waves the ripples, got bigger. Yes. Okay. Well, let's pretend that this piece of bendable plastic here is one of those waves. All right. See? So it would That's be like way. this, right? And I put an arrow here like this because I, the wave is moving. See, it, so I want to sh show that the wave, as it's going out here, is moving in this direction. So that's almost like a directional. Right. Which so way this is a directional go? signal. Let's pretend that this part of the drawing pad up here is air. And do you know how fast light goes through air? It goes, I think it's 186,000. 186,000 miles. miles per second. So would you write in big numbers here 186,000? Mm -hmm. All right. This means now that as light goes through, it goes 186,000 miles per second. Sure, it's fast, isn't it? It certainly is. Yeah. Now let's assume that this is water, just this like that water over here. Yes, that's water. Mm -hmm. Would you now write um, 1,000 mm -hmm. uh, okay. 400? 1,400. I'm sorry. 140,000. Oh, Same as this, only 140 oh. instead of 186. 40. There. That was it. Very good. Now, Get rid of that. when the light okay. starts going here, and suddenly here it's going to have to stop, uh, slow down, isn't it? Yes. It's going to go <coughs> and slow down and go real slow here, and then when it gets out here, it can go it fast, fast again. again. Let's watch what happens to the wave now as it, this happens. Watch. I'll do, it, I'll do it in slow motion, supposedly. 186,000 miles per second fast. until it gets right here. Now what happens to the front of the wave? Well, this old part over here should go slower. That'll slow, slow down, but what about these two edges? Well, they're still going fast because they're still in 186,000 Okay, so, so watch what'll happen. Oh, they go faster than that. They go faster. You see how the wave opens up like this? 
Now what happens when it gets within the water? Well, I guess they're all going the same. All going the same speed. And what happens when the wave gets out on the front? That's going faster. This is going fast like that. So it just bends and yeah. opens. So here's what happens now. It goes like this, opens up like that, and comes out like this. Notice that the directed direction did not change. No, you kept on going the same yeah, place. Like that. Okay, now, would you take this pencil and trace around here? Okay. Like, Now I've so changed funny. the shape of the water. I've yes, made the water have water has a hill on it. Uh, you could do that. You could have straight water, and you could have the light come in at an angle. And the important thing is that I now want the beam of light to hit this denser medium at an angle. This is the same as water now. Mm -hmm. Now watch what happens. This time, as the air, as the light goes through the air, what part of the wave goes slowly? Well, this part over here. Okay, if that part goes slowly, this part over here is going to go faster. faster. So watch so what happens. Speed up. It turns. See how it turns? Yes. And now as it comes out here, they it's going to... go the same. Okay, now what happens when it goes out here? Which part's well, going this fast? This part goes faster. Yes, you see? And that hurries up, and that goes low, and then that goes faster. Yeah, you see where the R angle is? It's yes. quite a bit different, isn't it? Let me, it let me, let me, let me do that again now. What I'm, what I'm trying to show you here is that when we, without this thing here before, when it went straight through, when the light goes through a medium where the sides are parallel, no bending occurs. Just but, go straight. But when it goes through a medium in which it is, hits at an angle, bending of the light occurs like that. So if you right? have it at an angle, it will bend. Okay. I see. Now let's actually see that happening right before our eyes over here in the brandy snifter. Let me, I have to start out my uh, cigarette smoker again. Well, that's very convenient, isn't it? Huh? Okay. Have you ever smoked? No, not well, yet. Here, would I don't you think like so. to smoke now? Here, you smoke. No, I don't think so. Well, you just push on the thing right. and you'll smoke. Up my there. Okay, now, first of all, let me turn on this and turn off my light so that you can see that. And I'll, I'll add the smoke up here, and you can yeah, see. The beam of light. You see right how the there. beam of light. Uh -huh. Now, what happens when it goes into the water? Well, it bends. Why? Well, because it's hit at an angle, just yeah. like before. And what? Why should the water? Why should uh, going through at an angle make any difference? What well, happens to the speed of the light in? Oh, air it's and water. down. Yes, it's slowed down. Because this is fast, and then right. there it gets slower. Right. Okay, so you can now okay. actually see why the light is bending, because it is um, slowed, slowed down. down. Okay, let me water. turn the lights on again. Because I want to see if you can see now, <coughs> with those glasses and that grid back here, why that happened. Come on back here again. I'll empty this one out. I'll leave that one full. All right. Either one. Okay, now, when the light goes through the air, which is really the, mostly the glass yes. like this, in other words, there's more air in here than glass, there's not very much bending, is there? Not much no, distortion. I can see it. Yeah, I see can it? see the wire. It's not too okay. much Okay, but what happens when it goes through this one with a liquid in it? Oh, I can hardly see uh, the one box. Yeah. So when you, do the, just the horizontal line. when you do this at home, put a pencil behind here and then add water, and you'll... And you'll see that it, it that it gets distorted this way. Now this liquid over here is not water. It is a different kind of a liquid in which you the light is bent in a different way. In fact, there are all different kinds of liquids that bend light in different ways. And I have a whole group of them over here. Come on over. Yeah. Yes, and I'll show you. Here are see these test tubes I have lined yes. up here. No. Here is a black ruler which I'll put back here like this. And you now look what happens as the light from this part of the ruler goes just through air. Well, you see the air. <laughs> you yeah, you see, see, <laughs> see air well. It's pretty hard to see air. Let me move this down just a little bit like that. There. Now, the light as it goes from here goes right up straight through the air, and you don't see any distortion. You'd see it no. going in a straight line. Now, this test tube right here has air in it, but all you can see Nothing is the effect of the glass. See that there, the, yes, the bump on the side of the glass? Mm -hmm. Right here, you can see the ruler goes up just a little bit. Yes. This one, however, has water in it. And you yeah. see? Yes, it has a curve. You see how it's curved? But the next one has a different kind of liquid. The same, and notice how it's curved more here it's than... It's curved it, more than the water. Yes, it's curved more. This, this, well, let's see if I can put my finger on it. This curve right here in water, now this curve right here, see it? Is yes. greater here than here. 
And notice this curve is even greater yet. It a, has a great big deep in it yeah. now. Yeah, a, a deep uh, bend in it. Mm -hmm. Well, now, these three liquids are good examples of the three kinds uh, of uh, liquids that slow light down at various degrees. Here's air, yes. in which light goes very fast, 186,000 miles per second. In, th this, in, in the case of water, uh, the, the light is slowed down somewhat. In this case, this is a different kind of liquid called that? monochlorobenzene. This Mono one. Monochlorobenzene. And light is slowed down just about the same amount as it's slowed down when light goes through glass. You mean it and glass go through the light the same Right, way. about the light same. The same this way. one, however, slows down light even more. And it is called, that? well, this is called bromonaphthalene. You can see just by the curvature uh, that it slows down more, yes. So in this case, glass over here is slowed down, light goes about 140,000 miles yeah, per second. Yes. But in the case of the monochlorobenzene in glass, it goes 120,000 miles per second. Oh, it slows down. Quite a bit slower. So with these things now, you can do all kinds of tricks. Well, before we do that, what practical use would it be to have a medium, a uh, thicker medium in which you can bend light? So you can bend light, what of it? <laughs> Why should you want to bend light? Well, lenses, they yeah. have, they bend light. Yes, you can make lenses. Those funny eyes. <laughs> yeah, those funny eyes. Eh? If you now control the angle with which the light hits this surface, you can control how much it bends. Oh, so the you can just control the In fact, how it looks over here are a whole bunch of lenses. The ones that I looked at, plus some other ones. And let's take a look at them, and you will see now how scientists, by controlling the amount of bending, can... Um, here, you, uh, you uh, look at these because I'm going to turn out the lights. I have one light up here, so we only see one shadow. So I'm okay. just turn it out a minute. Now, see, we only have one shadow down here. Now, let's start from the beginning. Here is a piece of ordinary glass. You see it? Yes. It's just a plain ordinary. piece of flat glass. Mm -hmm. And when the light goes through here, you see how it comes down through here and goes down Keeps here? Keeps going. And it does not bend, is it? It's just like when we first oh, saw that ruler. it's just a piece of glass. You can see it. And like there's no... Things. You can just see the edge around here where mm -hmm. it's ground. The shadow. Okay. Now, here's another piece of glass. You see this one? It has a... It how has it's bone. bent? In fact, mm -hmm. you can see the shadow down here. You see how yes. it's curved? Yes. Now watch what happens when the light goes through that. Look, the light's just in the middle. Yeah. Now, we investigated this once before, remember? Yes. And what, what did I we find that. out? Why is it so bright in the middle and so dark there? Because the way it's bent... All the light from the sides goes to the middle, mm -hmm. and you have a shadow at the end. All right. And by varying the height, you can vary the mm -hmm. size of the collection. You can see that this focal length is about up there someplace. Okay, and now... A lot of light in the middle. By controlling the amount of bending here, scientists can control how much the light will be bent here and control the focal length. And that's okay. a convex lens, Yeah, that's right? right. Now, notice this one. This kind of lens is flat in here, see? Concave. It's caved in. Right. What happens here? No, it's just the opposite. It has all the darkness in the middle, and just a little ring of light. Well, there's some light coming through there. See, yes. it's not as dark as the lens, see? The no, lens, this part is dark all. over here. But this one is not quite as dark. And where did all that, some of that light go? Oh, there it is. R there right it is there. right out here. This lens spreads out the effect. Okay. Pushes it all to the side. So you see now, by scientists controlling the, the curvature and the angle at which the light hits it, can make uh, the light kind of do anything they like. Well, bend they it in any pretty direction. pretty well, can't they? Now... What'll happen if I uh, pour some stuff over the top of these? Do you remember what happened? Yes, you could see them all just like the plain lens. Oh, all right. Here's, let's put the three of them up here in this plate so we can now right. shine the light straight down here and we can see the effect here. You put water over that. Yeah. Look, exactly like that one. Okay, first of all, here's the, here's the, uh, this is the one that magnifies. This is the one that spreads out, and here's the ordinary piece. And when I pour, like when I pour yes. water on here, you say, what's going to happen? It's going to look exactly like that. All There's right. only three of them. Okay, here's some water. I remember you from remember. this time. All right. Now, this, this, the, one, the one that's concave gets an air bubble caught up, so I have to get rid of it. Okay, there you are. Well, why isn't it like this? Hmm. You added water, and you yes. added it last time. Wh why did you assume that how it was... How come last time that was like that? I mean, well, now, wait, now, wait a minute, now, wait a minute. It has wait to be like that. Now, wait a minute, you've forgotten one little thing. What you were expecting was when I, when I poured water over here, that the, the cur that the curvature in of this one and the curvature out of that one were going to be made straight like this, so they all should look like that. Because you added the water, that's right. That's what you thought was going to happen, but it but didn't it happen. But it happened last time, now. Why didn't it happen? Hmm. I mean, it had to. Well, let's see if I can show you. I'll move this one over here like this. 
And I'll get two more lenses, one of which I dropped, so it's got a crack in it. But I'll hold it over here. What kind of a lens is that? Well, that's convex. The convex has a bump, bump. on it, right? And that magnifies. Bump. What kind of a lens is that? It's concave, because it caves in. It caves in, OK. And one is bent in, and the other is bent out. If I put one on top of the other like this and hold them, what should happen? And if they happen to be curved the same amount? Well, they're just like a plain lens. Oh, well, isn't that what happened? Well, I guess the outside, the black. In other words, when I separate them the like red. this, one magnifies, the other reduces. One spreads, one concentrates the light. When I put them together, they cancel each other out. And that's what you thought that the water was going to do, right? Well, why didn't you? Well, I'll see if I can show you. Here's another plate. This time, I remember. Here's another plate, and here are those oh. same two lenses that I just put up there, one with a yes. crack and the same with the other one. Now, this time, I will pour on again. There. And there you are, as soon as it stops. Now, there it is. Now, that's now what you expected. Now, why did it happen there, right there? Okay, in fact, here. Here's the, here's the, whoops, I'm sorry, I bumped it. And notice, we, here's the waves we studied last yes. time. Here are the two lenses that are suddenly no longer lenses. They're just plain pieces of glass, in effect. Yes. And look over here at the water. There they are over here. You remember when I said the speed of light when it goes through glass is what? Is the one, the speed? Yes. 140, 40, yeah, 120 is 20? through glass, 120,000 miles per second. What is the speed of light through water? Uh, water 140. Is 140. Yeah, 140. So in, in other words, over here, the light's going through a different speed than it is over here. And remember what happened when light went from a less dense medium to a more dense medium at the right angle, it bent? So here, the light is bending because it's going from water into glass. Over so here over is here. monochloral benzene. You mean it's monochloral benzene? That's right. I thought that was water. No, it wasn't. That's the part you forgot. Oh, I remember yeah. now. Remember it was a funny oh. smelling liquid? And now we get rid of the effect here by pouring a liquid that slows light down exactly the same amount as glass does. All right? Yeah, I okay. knew there had to be something now, because I remember. Excuse me, I'll turn on the lights again. Okay. Now, now you understand that when we can put together glass and monochloral benzene, through which the light goes at the same speed, we can do some tricks. That's how I made the sugar bowl disappear. Before we do the sugar bowl, though, I have a couple of others. Uh, ordinarily, if you have a piece of glass that is shaped like this, a bump on one side and a bump on the other, and you look at something, it magnifies, doesn't it? Yes. Magnifying glass, do you have one of those? All right, except this is a different kind so of lens. This is a different kind of lens this time, and that this one is made of air. An air lens? An air lens. First time you've ever seen an air lens. That's for sure. When we examine something with an air lens uh, made like this, should it make it bigger or smaller? Well, with an air lens, I guess it should be, just be the same, you know? What? Should be the same if you just look through air? There. OK, yeah. that's true. And I have some dimes sitting here in a dish and a mirror rigged up so that you mm -hmm. can see the mirror and, you know, and, and look through the mirror and see the dimes so we can both look at the same time. Now, it's if I hold an ordinary dime. glass lens over here, why, it doesn't magnify very much, does it? And you can see the dime down there. However, this time I'm going to complicate matters. I'm going to put water over the dimes. Now it's a wet dime. <laughs> yeah, now, now what will happen when I hold an air lens under water? In there. Well, the dime would be there. So now we have water in the way. Yes. So, so now the thing. light will go through a dense medium, and suddenly will go through a less dense medium. Oh, so it should be tinier. Yes, it'll be tinier. Watch what happens. In spite of the fact that this looks like a lens that should magnify, do you see the effect? It's such a difference. Yeah, well, you Once see, here is the dime ordinarily in water. How it's, uh, and here it is in, in air, and it's gone down just a little bit. So here probably is the first time you've ever seen an ordinary convex lens in which it decreases because it's this time made of less dense medium than the medium that the light is going through. You've probably never seen a lens that is less dense than air. No. no and you wouldn't either. Okay, that's one of the kind of tricks. Glass. Now, you see that little that little bottle right there? Yes, Here, it's a medicine dropper. Well, it's a medicine it's dropper. dropper. But you notice it's a medicine dropper that is only that only goes right to the level of the liquid there? Yeah, it only goes halfway. Only halfway. Except squeeze the top of the medicine dropper. Squeeze it? Well, where's the end of it? it keeps on now, going. would you see what happens? It suddenly appears under the water. 
or under the liquid. So it's if, under there. If you can look close, if you look closely, you'll see that the medicine dropper is there all the time. But what I've done is I filled oh. this bottle full of monochlorobenzene, and so when the stopper gets full of it, why well, you can't see, you can't see it because together. they're both. And it's not quite the same match, but that's the effect. The, the, so suddenly, know. it just looks like it's disappeared. Yeah. Okay, now that same effect can be done with the sugar bowl. Here's the sugar bowl. <coughs> yes. And but Mar I poured. Remember, I poured a liquid in the bowl. Monochlorobenzene. Monochlorobenzene. And if I take the sugar bowl and now s start to put it in, notice that it's all full of all these, yes. these cut glass sort of effect. Notice how the cut glass gone. effect is gone. And if I slowly lower it down, you lose your sugar bowl. <laughs> Why does the sugar bowl disappear now? Well, like I said before, the monochloral benzene there is uh, the same as glass. Like what it travels is? through it at the same speed. Yes, 120,000 miles per second instead of 186,000 miles So it can't bend second. or anything. It just goes, keeps on going. going through. Just like the glass was the monochloral benzene. Mm -hmm. and it, when, when you look at the li glass in air like this, why it's going through at a different... It's it going look like it's floating. It right certainly does, doesn't it? It looks like it's floating. In fact, if I simply put this under under the water, it'll partially disappear too. In fact, another Very way good. <laughs> another way of looking at it is um, is is here with this um, sugar. Uh, salt. salt shaker. When I put it under water, watch what happens. Uh, under monochlorobenzene, I should say. <laughs> see, because there's air inside, the light now is bent as it goes through. You see, mm -hmm. but watch what happens when I tip it over and allow the monochlorobenzene to flow inside. Watch. See how it disappears inside? Gone. There's a little salt on one side. You yes, can see you can it there. see the salt. And oh. of course, when I lift it up and pour it out, then you can see it again. Okay, well now let's go back and see if we can look at that beam of light over here again with my with my special cigarette smoker. Come on around over here. Because I want to make sure that you understand why the light bends. Why is it that when you have a beam of light that goes from a less dense medium, like air, to a more dense medium, like glass or water, why does it bend? Well, because in light, in air, it goes fast. But when it hits water, it goes slower. And if it hits at the right angle, wait, let me turn on my light again. When it, when it goes at the right kind of angle, what happens to the light as it goes oh, through? It bends. Half that, of it goes faster than the other That's right. Corner. And if you somehow can make both mediums uh, of the same speed, like make one monochlorobenzene and the other glass, why then it will disappear all based on the idea of refraction of light. Watch Mr. Wizard is presented each week at this time by the Public Affairs Department of the NBC Television Network in cooperation with New York University.